Alrighty, so uh, the extended patch notes are out, and I just wanted to talk about the banner a little bit and whether or not you should summon. So, uh, it is a brand new Ragnarok banner, and Ragnarok banners are pretty interesting because I feel like they try to make these uh, characters as useful as possible. Um, this one is kind of an interesting one. If you maybe have a lot of trouble against Keo in PvP, then this might be a banner for you. Um, if not... Uh, you might be able to get some use out of this character. I think some people were saying that she's okay for... She might be okay for the new boss. I'm not 100% on that, so don't quote me on that. But, um, yeah, the Elant is pretty easily skippable. She's not anything super crazy from my understanding. I am interested to try her out just in case because uh, she's basically only for guild boss. And I have a lot of trouble doing hell guild boss. And it would if, if she's good enough to actually help out with that, that would be nice. But uh, I'm not going to hold my breath on that. Uh, but, yeah, the character itself, is, uh, Scotty, anyway is pretty good she's pretty interesting so the whole idea is for every debuff that you put on her um she gains what is it she gains um de decreases all enemies attack and defense by eight percent and increases allies skill damage dealt uh, by 15% for each debuff on the hero. So if they're running a Keo team, you're going to do a lot more damage and it's <laughs> it's also decreasing their attack and defense, which is pretty nuts. Like I've seen some gameplay of her and like Trader Meliodas with Keo and Trader Meli does like pretty like abysmal damage which is pretty impressive uh it's kind of interesting to see like a character that counters debuff teams so much which is kind of cool honestly because i mean there's a bit of an issue with uh you know debuff teams at the moment but uh yeah the banner itself isn't too crazy 600 mileage just like most of the ragnarok banners are uh it does have quite a few ragnarok characters on the banner so i was really hoping that they would put that new green ragnarok merlin on here because i, I didn't summon for her at all when she ever she came out uh so i was hoping i would be able to get her on this one uh just off a chance but it doesn't look like that's the case uh maybe she'll be on the next ragnarok banner who knows but a lot of people have been really interested in Miguelda lately so she is on the banner if you're interested I don't know exactly what the rates are going to be I'm assuming these two characters are going to be 0 0.5 there's not a whole lot of extra like fluff in this banner so I'm assuming all of these characters are going to be maybe 0.25 maybe 0.2 but we'll just have to see whenever it comes out because I don't uh, I don't have access to JP at the moment, so I can't really check. Uh, if you have access to JP and you want to let me know down in the comments so other people can figure it out, feel free. Let me know. I mean, obviously, it's not going to be that big of an issue. The banner literally drops in like an hour or two, so uh, it's fine if you can't, but, you know. It, it's cool. Anyway, Brunhild is also on the banner, which is good because she's obviously a really good uh, unit for the bird. I've honestly stopped using Brunhild as much, and I've swapped over to using Escanor, uh, which says a lot because she is literally built for the bird, and Escanor is just so good. So I don't, I don't know. If you really want Brunhild and everything like that, she is a really cool character, and I do like her a lot for PvE stuff. Um, but for the bird lately, I've just not really been enjoying her for that. Uh, Ragnarok DN, she's okay. Sigurd's pretty cool. Uh, Miguelda is pretty interesting right now, especially with her getting a Holy Relic this patch. So that could definitely be, you know, something to sweeten the deal a little bit for you. But don't feel obligated uh, to summon on this just for one of the off banner units. If, you, if you're not interested in these two, I would, I'd never recommend people summon for like off banner units, like the non rated up ones. But at the same time, this is, I don't know, it's kind of a hard, it's kind of like a double edged sword, I guess, because obviously Miguelda and Sigurd and Brunhild aren't really on normal banners that aren't Ragnarok banners so I don't know this might be your best bet uh, if you really want Miguelda right now because I, I don't really see her being on any of the like the next couple of banners unless it is a Ragnarok banner so uh, if you really need Miguelda go for it I guess I, I, I just I don't like chasing non-rated up units it's just it's a bad time but anyways yeah the rest of the banners pretty okay nothing too crazy um, pretty standard stuff but if you don't know what the character does um, I'll actually open up the Seven Deadly Sins uh, or the Grand Cross database because it's a lot better uh, to look at like individual like ranks of skills. Um, she we've already went over a passive, but her regular first attack card is decreases the max HP of the hero by two percent. 
um, one time for three turns and inflicts damage equal to 250% of attack on one enemy. And this is, she's putting a debuff on herself so that way she can deal more damage and stuff with her passive. So just know she's almost kind of like doing the same thing as Eleven does, but it's not nearly as bad. Um, if you don't know Eleven from the Stranger Things collab, deals damage to herself kind of whenever she uses a skill i think it's like 10 percent of, of her max hp or something like that and gets deducted or whatever um but she's kind of doing the same thing but it's very small numbers it's only two percent of max hp um and it lasts for three turns which is good because you'll keep that debuff on and um i mean it's not like there's anybody running ruin nowadays that would actually be a really interesting uh a, like counter unit for this character is running somebody with ruin so that way it takes all the debuffs off that'd be kind of interesting but anyways uh yeah so it lowers your own max hp so that way you, you know you get an extra buff you do a little bit more damage and then it's got pretty decent scaling honestly <laughs> at level three it does 625 percent of attack on one enemy which is pretty nutty like that's actually pretty crazy uh that's pretty high and then her other skill, uh, I wasn't actually super sure about this one because like on the preview itself, uh, you can see it, it's the gold level three card and it says remove the buff and stances. And so I was like, mm, I don't know if she's going to have uh, buff removal at level one, but she does. So you can remove buffs at level one and two, and then at level three, you uh, gain stances to that as well, which is pretty nice. And then her ultimate is just like Brunhild's, except for it is an AOE skill instead of a single target, which is a little unfortunate, I think. Uh, I mean, I guess if you really max that out, it could do a lot of damage but uh i don't think that this is going to be like a big like damage dealing ult so i don't know if this would be one that you would want to like rush for or anything i mean I, I, it'll heal you up a little bit but in today's meta there's a lot of one shot potential so i don't know if i could really recommend this ult being like all that good but yeah it heals your allies depending on how much damage you deal um and obviously the scaling on it will sort of go up as you increase the character um elat on the other hand i'm not too sure about this one so if you don't know in guild boss if allies have all three attributes strength hp and speed increases all allies defense related stats by eight percent and decreases the damage received by five percent at the start of the allied turn limit of five times so it'll make you a little bit tankier harder to kill um it'll obviously take a couple of turns for it to start really building up which i think might be an issue because a lot of the like hell mode or like hell difficulty bosses just deal a lot of damage straight out of the gate um, but i don't know it could end up being pretty okay her regular cards are deplete ultimate gauge which is good because that the deplete ultimate gauge is actually one of the ones that gives you pretty decent points most of the time um in guild boss and then the other one is a solidify card which i don't think we've seen anybody really with a solidify card um since like blue ellie hawk which is pretty interesting so applies one solidify on one ally if there uh, are debuffs they are removed and one additional solidify effect is applied so I don't know if this is going to be like super good or not. I don't know. It could be pretty interesting for like amplify units or something like that for, you know, maybe like the Derriere team in Kellac, uh, which we are running Kellac right now on global. So this could be like perfect scenario to try and run her. Uh, I don't know. I think if I end up getting a copy of her, if I don't pull a single copy of her for one rotation, I'm not going to go out of my way to try to get her. But if I do end up getting her and, um, scotty on the other hand i will try to sort of power her up and see how she works because i was pleasantly surprised uh, surprised with red liz uh whenever she came out being like an only like fort solgris time limited dungeon sort of character so uh i don't know maybe i'll be pleasantly surprised here she has the same ult as the other elat which increases defense related stats and removes debuffs so uh some very interesting characters i don't know exactly if you're going to be wanting this elat or not but um Scotty is pretty interesting. So I would say if you need Ragnarok characters, this is going to be a pretty interesting banner to summon on because obviously Scotty's pretty cool in of, in, in of herself. I don't know how to word that right. Uh, but Brunhild is also good. Sigurd is pretty good if you power him up and like actually invest into him, of course. Miguelda is kind of a hot commodity at the moment because a lot of people are using her for the bird uh, and the Holy Relic. So the rest of these characters are kind of meh, not really all that needed unless you're just missing them for some reason. Um, so yeah, I don't know. I would say that it's not necessarily like a must summon if you've already summoned on some of the other Ragnarok banners and you already have some of these extra characters. Um, but yeah, if, you, if you're having a lot of trouble with Keo maybe or you just want her for waifu status because she is... Uh, 
She's a bit of a waifu. Uh, then go ahead and summon. So that's pretty much it for me. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Feel free to subscribe if you have not already, and I will be live in just a few hours doing summons, so stop by.